Hi everyone, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. In this video, I wanted to talk a bit about SharePoint Online site structure. So the reason I, I thought this would be a good idea to share my thoughts on is because it comes up a lot with my customers. They ask me, what's good practice for SharePoint site structure in SharePoint Online? And this comes particularly from customers that have SharePoint on-prem already and they have a legacy environment that has a complex site structure and they're wondering how they could simplify it before or after they move into SharePoint Online. So what I'm tending to recommend these days is to think of your organization as a network of groups rather than a hierarchy of teams. And in this video, I'm going to explain what that means. Traditionally, historically, SharePoint site structure has been very rigid and formal. There wasn't a lot of options when it came to site structure. A site structure was a complex thing because particularly in very large organizations, massive enterprises that have global deployments, they have perhaps lots of businesses or business units within them. Building a site structure to accommodate all of that is really difficult, particularly in the way that SharePoint does its site structure. So the unit of administration in SharePoint is the site collection. And a site collection is just a hierarchy of sites. You have a top level site at the top, and then you have a bunch of subsites beneath that and you can go very deep if you like. So then the trick was to figure out how do I fit my business into that structure? Do I have many of these site collections or can I cram the whole business into one of them? And those questions were hard to answer and you'd spend a lot of time trying to figure that out. A particular problem with this structure was the permissions. So permissions flow downwards. So if you can imagine pouring water in the top of this site collection, the water pours all the way down into all the other subsites below. And you can, if you want to, block the travel of water by what we call breaking inheritance. So the permissions at the lower levels are no longer inherited from the ones above. So that led to a lot of complexity because inheritance could be broken all over the place and then permissions would become complex and messy. Second problem was that this model is very flexible. So you'd find that you put site structure in place that accommodated your business at the time, but if your business changed in any way, say teams were merged or the names were changed, or you needed to add new teams to the structure, it was very difficult to do that. And it was difficult to move documents and content around within the structure or move it out into other site collections. So it wasn't very flexible which meant that it wasn't very accommodating to change. And final issue was one of administrative overhead. So finding people to look after these site collections and manage them well was really difficult because most people in the business don't have strong SharePoint skills and nor should they. And so what tended to happen was that the IT teams and the service desk would manage the sites on behalf of the business. And that was sometimes a blocker to productivity because sometimes you just want to get something done and if you have to raise a ticket and wait for someone to resolve the ticket for you to make a change to the site collection to get whatever it was done that you needed to do that was sometimes a problem so people would often work around that by using other services like shadow it like google drive or dropbox to share files rather than use a company sharepoint so administrative overhead was also a big problem for the site collection model so what's the alternative to that well, this brings me back to my first comment about thinking of your organization as a network rather than a hierarchy. So what do I mean when I say network? So I'm thinking of a network of groups of people with interconnecting relationships. I could be a project manager in a project group that has a relationship with an IT engineer in the IT group. And there will be lots and lots of these interconnecting relationships right across your organization that make up the network. So this structure lends itself well to how SharePoint Online sites are managed these days. Microsoft have gravitated away from site collections as they used to be towards something called Office 365 groups. You can manage your organization as a bunch of interconnected groups. And for every group you create, a SharePoint site is automatically created alongside it. So you no longer have to think about the hierarchy which makes the whole permissioning issue much simpler. When you assign permissions, you're just assigning them to a group. You don't have to think about what inheritance is doing, what comes from above and what goes below. You're just thinking about a single group. Plus, 
the permissions can be managed by the owner of the group rather than the IT department. So changing permissions, adding new members to the group is very simple. And because group structure is very flat, it's very flexible. Creating a new group or deleting an old one isn't going to have much impact on the rest of the organization. And group creation and management is all self-service, so the business can manage their own groups without waiting for the IT department to do it for them. And that means we've worked around our final problem of administrative overhead. If everything is self-service, the business can manage the groups on their own and they don't need to involve the IT department to get simple tasks done. So to summarize then, when it comes to the questions of SharePoint site structure, think of your organization as a network rather than a hierarchy. And those questions become much easier to answer.